Any chances for making profits down here? Yes, there are chances for making profits because anytime there's a discrepancy like the discrepancy that you're seeing down here, here this is telling me that one euro using the cross exchange rate gives me 89 cents down here. And here you have one euro giving me 0.9045. So the, basically the exchange rates down here are kind of out of kilter. Okay? The fact that the implied cross exchange rate is also not 0.9045 means that you should be able to exploit the slight mispricing down here between the euro and the US dollar to make what are called arbitrage profits. Now, usually the easiest way of showing this is just assume some some value, uh, some starting sum, like $100,000 seems like an easy number to work with. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to assume that you are an US investor with $100,000. What is the reason why we call it cross rate? It's called the cross exchange rate, right? Because the cross exchange rate is the exchange rate calculated from other exchange rate. It's not the direct exchange rate. Imagine that you're a US investor and that you have $100,000. <coughs> what do you think the nature of the transaction should be down here? What should be the sequence of transactions? Now, what is the cross exchange rate that we derived down here? The cross exchange rate that I ended up with was 0.8907 per euro. Mm numbers down here. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference with regard to the argumentation down here. The number is 8915. Isn't that? Yes. Okay. The number is 8915. Right. Okay, here's what I should be doing. Okay? I Let me use one euro to buy a dollar for 0.8915 and then what do I do? I buy a euro for 0.8915 and then I sell it for 0.9045, right, exactly. So I can sell it for 0.9045. So I use $100,000 to buy British pounds. US dollars into British pounds at the exchange rate of 1.44 US dollars per pound. How much does that give, uh, give me in pounds? <coughs> Value in pounds? Should be about 69,238 approximately. Then, okay, what do I do next? Perhaps an easy way of visualizing the transaction is like this. I take the US dollars first, and I convert the US dollars into British pounds, and then I convert the British pounds into euros, all right? So I'm taking the US dollars and converting it into pounds. So I have everything in pounds now. Let me convert the pounds into euros. So use pounds to buy euros. for the euro? 1.62, right? Which 
gives me a Yodo value of 1.12165. Okay, so I've taken the US dollars and converted it into pounds. Now I, I took the pounds and I converted it into, into, Euro, into euros. So what do I do? What's my last step? I go to this bank and I sell euros for 90 cents down here. I sell euros for US dollars. higher than the value you started out with, which is 101.453. So your profit down here from this transaction, I started out with $100,000, I end up with uh, 1450 dollars. Yeah, that should be the nature of the triangle of uh, arbitrage profit that I make from all these transactions. Just think about it a little bit, but... Uh, uh, no, 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 I'm saying you use pounds by euros. Yeah, the reason is this. the rate that you use euros. This cross-exchange rate was established from which code? From, code, uh, from the code for bank B and, and bank C, correct? This cross-exchange rate down here came from the, from the codes down here. So what I'm doing is this. I'm taking dollars, converting it into pounds. Then I'm taking the pounds, converting it into euros down here. And I know that since that trade is out of the with this rate down here, once I convert it into euros, I can sell the euros at a slightly higher price of 90 cents down here as compared to the implied price of 89 cents down here. So when I do this, basically I get 89 cents. But if I sell it to bank A, I get 90 cents. I was asking you on B, mm -hmm. where you multiply the by euros mm -hmm. at the rate of Right. Yeah, I mean, in the real world, you, you, can take, uh, you can think of all these rates down here as being uh, midpoint quotes down here, if you will. If you think of these as being midpoint quotes down here, then this should be okay. Yeah, in the real world, there's always going to be brokerage spread. And in fact, for individual investors, the brokerage spread can be 100 times more than for institutional investors. I used to work at the Chicago Board of Trade, and I know the manner in which individual investors get screwed in futures markets. I mean, you get uh, you pay hundred dollars for a transaction that an institutional investor would only need to pay about a dollar for. Another question. Uh -huh. Looking at this problem, I think mm -hmm. the energy was in this one. Mm -hmm. Can you? Is there a way that you can tell from seeing it that there's an arbitrage? I think you have to go through this actual investment steps um, for each. It could be that uh, the way that you figure out whether there is an arbitrage opportunity or not is you first calculate the cross exchange rate. Okay? You calculate the cross exchange rate, which is this rate down here. The moment this rate down here does not mesh with the rate down here, you know that you should be able to make a profit. If, for instance, this cross exchange rate also gave me 0.9045, there's no way that you're going to be able to make a profit. So it has to be out of the picture. Yes, absolutely. If there's greater or less, you should always be able to figure out a strategy where you can make profits down here. Sometimes it's a matter of just a little bit of experimentation, that's all. Yeah. Could we say that the pound is undervalued? Could we say that the pound is, you know, I'm not sure that one can make an assertion like that. All we know is that the in the configuration of these three things, something is out of filter. We can't say that the pound is undervalued or the euro is overvalued. We can't make an assertion like that. Something down here, uh, all these three guys involved down here, something is out of kilter. And all that we are doing is we are exploiting the mispricing in the manner of the relationship of these three exchange rates down there. That's all. 
So there's no implication that one is overvalued or one is undervalued. It's just that the relationship here is, is somehow out of, out of balance. for you, then perhaps you guys can uh, can do it. Uh, I'll walk you through the problem. Again, you have a stock A, you have a stock B. This problem is slightly different in nature because we don't have a risk-free asset down here. Uh, the dynamics of the problem looks like this. By the way, you guys had a question about uh, about dominance, if I remember right, uh, uh, in the previous example. I can't see, uh, see any pattern of dominance down here. For stock A, uh, if, uh, uh, if the good state of the world happens, which stock is better? Which one would you prefer? A, A right? If uh, the bad state of the world occurs, which, which stock would you prefer? B, right? So there's really no pattern of dominance down here. Clearly. One stock does not dominate the other stock down here. And also remember, with regard to dominance, it may not be quite so obvious. For instance, if this value down here is 25, for instance, but this value is higher down here, it's difficult to assert that kind of dominance because you, you know that the price in both case, uh, in state one and state two is higher, but also the price that you're paying for the stock is higher down here. So it's not always easy to make those kinds of dominance comparisons, so watch out making something like that. 